it's time to visit with Brent in our book nook. How are you doing? Very well. How are you doing today? <laughs> good to have you. Okay, good to so see you. we have a good array, and uh, this first one we're talking about the Civil Wars. Uh, you may notice, of course, you were telling me earlier that um, they're involved with Taylor Swift. Very so much so. Very much so. What they are are a country duo that really does more traditional, almost bluegrass type country music as opposed to the pop stuff. And even though Taylor Swift will do some, sometimes some more pop oriented material, she'll do some things with them that are a really nice collaboration. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but maybe on the Grammys a couple of years ago, um, they actually came out and played before her and I think they may have worked together also, I think, on what was that, the Hunger Games soundtrack? Is that right? Oh, yes, I yes. Think so. They've definitely. Uh, and so this one is just them, though, right? Kind exactly. of their yeah. duet. Yeah, yeah. And, and they're really, they're really, really good musicians as well as good singer songwriters. Kind of got that neat bluegrass feel to it. Yeah. Um, this next one, I, I'm going to let you say the title Poly Polyphonic Spree. Okay. The Polyphonic Spree uh, are essentially a, a sort of a chorus, like a choir. Uh -huh. Who do like pop music, um, and they will do they will do covers of like Nirvana songs and other things, and I, I can't keep track of how people are in this group. There's musicians, there's uh, more than a dozen singers, and so you get this big sort of sing along quality with them. That's really yes. neat. Yes, and they remind me of when I was a kid. There was a group called the Mike Curb Congregation who did exactly the same thing, where they would have this big kind of chorus, but they would do pop songs of the day. Okay, so this is a. Uh They've got 11 songs on this album, yes. so it looks like you've got several to choose from. Pretty yep. cool. And uh, you can also check them out on YouTube. There's some video clips for, of them on YouTube that are just a lot of fun to watch. Okay, and someone everyone knows, Mr. Oh, Elvis Presley. Mr. Elvis Presley. Uh, this is the 40th anniversary of his time with Stax Records back in the 70s, and so basically it's just picking some of the best stuff. He recorded really, really before, right, kind of not right before his death, but in that time period. Okay. Okay. So it's the, it's the, it's the later uh, stage of his career, but um, a lot of this stuff may not have been like the big hits you remember from his earlier career or the the, the, or the Vegas stuff. But a lot of his fans uh, will know this stuff. He was doing more gospel type material and more traditional things like that. Okay, so that's really neat there. Now this next one, I mean, I, do these come out every week? I feel it like it feels like no. every week. I don't. I'm, maybe maybe it's a monthly thing. I'm not sure. But I will say that the the now that's what I call music this time around. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. They've got, uh, I, I believe, um, Albert Levine is on it. I think Taylor Swift is on it. Justin Timberlake's on it. Uh, Selena Gomez is on it. Um, What's the song? The Radioactive. Uh, that's the song that they always sing. Uh, See, my grandkids would know the answer to this. Well, I want to find it because now, <laughs> uh, now I'm not going to see it. Oh, and Demi Lovato's on it as well. Wow. Okay. So, so all, the, all the Disney kids are on it. Yeah. Kesha, you can't. Leave oh, like Kesha. Out. That's yeah. right. She's on there too. Capital Cities. I like them too. Yeah. Just, Oh yeah, there's a lot of good stuff, and you know, it's it's like if you don't um, if you don't want to buy a whole albums, but you want, but the kids, you know, want the hit songs, that's the way to do it, and that's why they're still cranking these things out. That's why they're still in oh, business. Oh yeah, oh yeah, there you go, makes sense. Now moving on to our books. Hey, James Patterson has another new book out this time around, and it's called The Mistress. People have been asking, what's it? Where's this book about James Patterson's mistress? And I go, no, 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 no. it's called The Mistress. But basically, it's about this young man who has a kind of an obsessive personality where he gets into something he's really, really into it. Motorcycles, movie trivia, whatever. Well, what happens is uh, the young lady that he, he's very fond of is, is found dead outside her apartment. And it's believed to be a suicide. Well, he thinks it was murder. Mm -hmm. And he's going to put his obsessive compulsive personality to try to solve this crime. Okay. Yeah, so it's very, very interesting that way. Sounds like there'll probably be a lot of twists in it. I imagine there'll be a lot of twists, yeah. Interesting. And this next one looks a bit... Coll Coll collision okay. is the story of the previous uh, 2012 election, uh, the competition between uh, President Barack Obama and Governor uh, Mitt Romney. And sort of sort of behind the scenes, uh, for, more for political junkies, people who like that kind of thing. I got about 47% into the book, and I, I had a pretty good idea that Romney was going to lose. But it's, it's a really interesting book. All right, there you go. Yep. <laughs> got a prediction there. I got guess. a prediction, yeah. Uh, this is um, a, a young kids or young readers series of fantasy, uh, the land of stories. It's a brother and sister kind of going through uh, this kind of make believe magical land where, where stories come from and where stories come true. Hey, but magical stuff that is really cool for the huge, kids to be kind huge. of imagination. It is, it is, and and uh, some people will say it's because of the popularity of the Harry Potter series. That may be, but there's lots of different types of uh, magic stories too. It's not all wizards, and it's mm -hmm. not all 
uh, which is it's also just sort of magical kingdoms as well, like in the case of this. Okay, and this is the last one we have? The, the, the Attack of Jabba the Puppet. This is a series <laughs> that was inspired by um, basically it's a, it's a story point of view of a middle of a middle school student who makes Star Wars origami puppets and yes. for whatever reason the, the stories just keep on coming the first one was Yoda <laughs> origami the Jabba the puppet is the latest one um, and what's really fun is uh, it's it has helped get a lot of kids really into origami cool. we actually sell origami paper at our store now origami books and uh, it's, of course, what's amazing about it is this one more Star Wars book out there that is completely different from the rest of the series. I mean, who, I don't know who thought, I mean, like, again, the, who would have thought of something like this? Uh, yeah. And the fact that we have an entire series of these books now. It's pretty cool. And it's giving very the kids funny. Some very cool. Too. Yeah, they're fun books. Thank you, Brent. We Thank appreciate you. it. Stay with us. We'll be right back.